Hi and welcome to this video on calculating limit. So as part of this video we're going to look at calculating the limit of a given function. So just a very quick recap, there are three main rules um, we have when it comes to calculating limits. The first one is to do a basic substitution in. So as we are told that x for example tends towards a certain value, we substitute in that value unless this causes an error. In the case that it causes an error, we want to factorize first and then substitute in the value. So that's going to be our two main rules. We rarely see the first one, um, especially at higher level, we're more likely to see the second one or the third. So the third rule here when it comes to calculating limits is when the value is infinity so when they tell us x tends towards infinity we divide everything by the variable to the highest power and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means and why we have to do that so let's take the first example so we're going to first calculate this limit so evaluate the following limit the limit as x tends towards 2 of x squared minus 4. so all we're going to do to actually work out this limit is we're going to substitute in so it's telling me as x goes towards 2 so we're going to simply sub in 2 instead of x so we have 2 squared minus 4 which is 4 minus 4 so the limit as x tends towards 2 of x squared minus 4 is 0. So that's the most basic example we have of calculating limits. And we see something like this as we work with our limits using um, differentiation from first principles. So now we'll move on to the second type, and this is where we have to use factorization. So it says, evaluate the following limit. I want to find the limit as x tends towards 0 of x squared minus 5x minus 14 all over x minus 7. Now, the reason I know here we have to use factorization is because if we substitute in x as 7, which we did in the last example, the denominator of this fraction would be 7 minus 7, and that would give us 0. Now, it's a really, really, really important to remember that you cannot divide by 0. It is not possible. If you try to do anything divided by 0 in your calculator, you will get an error. So if I have nothing, I can divide it between five people. Everyone gets part of my nothing. However, if I have five things, I cannot divide it by 0. Effectively, what I'm trying to do in that case is make it disappear, which is not possible. So we cannot divide by 0. So in this case, we cannot use do simple substitution so we must instead try to factorize what we have and in the case um, simplify and in this case simplify it and then hopefully we'll be able to do substitution so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this I'm going to take my top line over here for a second and I'm just going to deal with my x squared minus 5x minus 14 so I can factorize that using guide number um, and when I do that, I get minus 7x plus 2. Okay, so then coming back, instead of what I have above, I've just rearranged it to have the limit as x tends towards 7 of x minus 7x plus 2 all over x minus 7. And hopefully now you'll see that we're getting a lovely cancelling cancellation happening here so x minus 7 can be divided into both the top and the bottom line and that leaves us with a much simpler limit as x tends towards 7 of x plus 2. Now I'm able to substitute in and work that limit just like example 1 because I won't get an error. So here I'm going to say the limit as x tends towards 7 of x plus 2 is going to be 7 substituting in for x plus 2 which gives me 9. Okay, so this is where you need to be very careful and you're watching out, am I going to get an error? And that is a huge thing to watch for in many questions, not just a limits question. When you're dealing with a fraction, that there is always this idea that the denominator cannot be zero. So it limits what our values of a, a variable can be, especially when that variable is in the denominator. So let's look at our third type, and this is where we have infinity. Now, to talk in, through infinity a little bit more. 
So infinity is not a number, it's a concept. So when I talk about infinity, it is the biggest possible number that I can think of. And then I can add one to make it bigger. And then I can multiply it by two to make it bigger. So infinity is constantly growing. So it isn't a specific number, it is more of a concept. Now, the problem is if I have infinity and I add one, I get infinity, but obviously that's not the same infinity as I had before. So infinity can be quite difficult to deal with. So what we do when we're dealing with infinity is we deal with these very basic little rules. And that is the limit as x goes to infinity of one over x is zero. So what that means is, as I have a fraction, which is 1 over x, and as the x tends towards infinity, which means basically it's getting bigger, 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 the fraction here is getting smaller, smaller, smaller. So if you think about it, I have a half, and then a third, and then a quarter. In that case, my fractions are getting smaller. So this is a fraction which will get smaller, 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 and the smallest number it can get towards is zero. And the reason for that is I have a positive number divided by a positive number. So it can never get into the negatives. It's just going to get tinier and tinier until it gets super, super close to zero, but it won't get to zero itself. It's not possible. So this is our limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x equals zero. And it doesn't matter what number I put into this. So for example, I can put a K here and it will still go to zero because it doesn't matter what that value of K is, as X gets hugely, like as it gets bigger, 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 as it gets really, really big, that's still going to get a smaller, smaller, smaller fraction until it gets to zero. It's even true no matter what value um, or what power I have of X. So it's still the same if it's X squared, it's just getting bigger quicker. So these ideas here are our key ideas to help us find the limit when we're given um, x tending towards infinity. So our method here is I want to get everything as a fraction over x. So what I do is I divide across by the variable to the highest power. Now in this case my variable to the highest power is x. So I keep my limit because I haven't done anything with that yet. And once I do everything above the line and below the line, it won't change the fraction. So I'm going to divide everything by x. So I get 1 over x minus 3x over x all over 4x over x plus 2 over x. So again, because I've done it to everything, so every term has been treated the same above and below the line, that means I haven't changed my fraction. It may look different, but I haven't changed the value. So as x goes to infinity of 1 over x minus 3, all over 4 plus 2 over x. Now, hopefully you'll be able to see that I've created two fractions and both of these fractions have x in the denominator and we know what happens as x goes towards infinity for 1 over x and that is it'll get smaller till it gets to 0. So both things that I've highlighted here will go to 0. Um, the 3, so what happens to 3 as x goes to infinity? Well, 3 is 3, it doesn't change, it doesn't, it's not affected in any way by the x because there's no x there. So we end up with something like this. So I have a 0 because 1 over x, the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x is 0, the limit as x goes to infinity of 2 over x is 0, and that simply gives me minus 3 over 4. So let's look at another um, example where we're given infinity. So in this case, we're told as n goes to find the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared plus 9 all over 2n squared plus 9n. So using the exact same logic as we had the last time, we have the limit as n goes to infinity. And I'm going to divide everything by the variable to the highest power, which is in this case is not n, it's actually n squared. So I have n squared divided by n squared plus 9 over n squared all over 2n squared over n squared plus 9n 
over n squared. So I have a little bit of cancelling happening here. Be careful here, this will leave me a 1. Okay, doesn't disappear. This divides with this and we get, remember anything divided by itself is 1, not 0. So I get 1 plus 9 over n squared all over 2 plus 9 over n. Again, we know when there's a fraction, so here where the n is in the denominator, the limit as n goes to infinity of 9 over n squared, that will go to 0. The limit as n goes to infinity of 9 over n will also go to 0. So we get 1 plus 0 all over 2 plus 0, which gives me a half. Okay, so now let's look at a more complex example. So evaluate the limit as n goes to infinity of the square root of minus 1 plus 2n squared all over 1 plus n. Now, this square root, because it's at the top and not the bottom, causes um, a, little, a little bit of problems for us. Uh, we can work through them, but I just want to first touch on a misconception that happens here. So often what students say is, well, can I not just square the top and square the bottom? And what I'd ask you is, if I square the top of this and square the bottom of this, do I end up with the same fraction? Okay, so think of it this way. If I have 3 over 4 and I multiply the top by 2 and the bottom by 2, I get 6 over 8. Yes, it looks different, but the value is still the same. However, when I square the top and square the bottom, is that true? So that's definitely true. And the answer is no, that is not equal. So I can't simply square the top, square the bottom. That will not work. So what we're going to do instead is to extend this square root so it's on both the top and the bottom. So we only care about the idea of the fraction working with the limit, the square root can come into it at the very end. So we can simply ignore it. But first I need to apply it to the full fraction. So the top line doesn't move, it doesn't change. However, what I've done now is I've applied the square root to the bottom line. Now I can't just apply a square root to the bottom line. I need to make sure that I basically account for it and what I'll do to cancel it effectively was square the bottom line. So if I square a number and then square root it, I'm back to my original number. So by simply squaring this here, I'll be able to work my fraction. So I'm going to effectively ignore the fact I have the square root. I'm going to leave it there because I don't want to lose it, but I'm not going to worry terribly about it for the moment. I'm going to multiply out my bottom line, I get 1 plus 2n plus n squared. So what I do now is I treat this limit question like I would have treated any other. I have a, the limit as n goes to infinity. I'm going to divide everything by the n to the highest power, which in this case is n squared, and I get the limit as n goes to infinity. I still have my square root. I get minus 1 over n squared plus 2n squared over n squared, 1 over n squared plus 2n over n squared plus n squared over n squared. So that's all in my square root. And I'm going to tidy that up a little. So these cancel leaving me with 1. Be so careful with that 1. These cancel leaving me with the 2. One of these n's cancels here. So what I've actually got is the limit as n goes to infinity of minus 1 over n squared all over 1 over n squared plus 2 over n plus 1 and a plus 2 here. Just like before, I know that any fraction will go to 0. Now, how will this negative work? Well, if 1 over n squared goes to 0, minus 1 over n squared goes to minus 0. But we don't technically have a minus 0. We just refer to it as 0. So it will stay as is. So the limit is the square root of 0 plus 2 all over 0 plus 0 plus 1, 
which gives us our final answer of the square root of 2. So that square root, once it was applied to the whole fraction, was only going to come in on the answer. The rest of it was not affected by the square root. So our last example now is something a little bit different. It is as n goes to infinity. However, we don't have a variable to a power. The n itself is a power. So this is more of a logical working through. Now, just to note, this is from a sample paper. So I wasn't asked on the actual exam. Uh, but they ask, what is the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 times 1 power to the power of n? Now, we need to think this one logically. If I have one third and it's to a power, what happens as that power gets bigger, bigger, bigger? So what happens to a fraction as a power gets bigger, bigger, bigger? And maybe to work with that, we'll take an example. So I have a half. So if I do that squared, I get a quarter, okay? And if I have a half and I do it to the power of three, remember I'm doing the th uh, power of 3 to the top, which 1 to the power of 3 is 1, and 2 to the power of 3 on the bottom, 8. Okay, so I could see now, as that power gets bigger, 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 da, 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 the half, as it gets up to infinity, is actually going to be so small that it's going to be very close to 0. So actually, this piece here, the fraction to the power of n as n goes to infinity is actually going to go to 0. Now, the 2 is going to be unaffected. So what we get is 2, but this is going to go to 0. So actually, the whole thing itself will go to 0. So that wasn't using one of the three rules we talked about at the very start. It was more working through a more logical thought process to figure out what uh, the answer would be.